Welcome with uh, Forward Talk, and uh, we are coming to you again with another episode and uh, going to talk about a topic that I feel like is uh, very important. And before I get into that, though, please take the time to uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, help us grow the channel. I think at this point we're only like 10 subscribers away from 600, so help us hit that next milestone. Also, <clears throat> this channel has blessed you in any way, and I know for many of you it has because I receive your feedback via text messages and direct messages on social media, et cetera. Please consider going to Patreon and subscribing, um, uh, becoming a patron and supporting our channel. You can do that for as little as $1 a month, and that's $12 a year. And I know uh, that the Lord has blessed you to the point to where <clears throat> if we've been a blessing to you that you can support uh, for a dollar a month. And of course, there are different tiers on Patreon. You can check that out and see the different levels of support. For many of the levels of support, you will get this book as well as my other book, free of charge, just for signing up. And uh, so we would love to have you become a Patreon supporter. But today we are going to be talking about uh, an issue that I think is important. It's one that's important to me. Uh, simply because I have been raised in the ministry and I'm at a point now at 47 years old where my wife and I are church planting and I've been in various levels of of a ministry my entire life. I was raised in a pastor's home. I have traveled full time. I've been supported by the people of God, uh, churches through itinerant ministry and stuff for many years. And uh, I've also been a full-time pastor. And so I want to talk about something, however, that uh, that's become very important to me. And that is the topic and the issue of whether or not preachers should, uh, should have secular, I mean, not say secular, because I don't really like that term, whether they should have a marketable skill set where they can make money outside of preaching or whether or not it is prudent or wise for a, a preacher to, de to depend exclusively upon a fellowship, a church, or uh, anything like that for their income and support for their family. Now, I know all of the verses of Scripture that we quote, they that preach the gospel should live with the gospel, uh, muzzle not the ox that treadeth out the corn, a workman's worthy of his hire. Um, I know all of those texts. And and of course, if God has blessed you to where you can operate full-time in ministry and do nothing else, uh, that's that's great. I praise God for that. I've been there and I've lived in that way. But I also know that there are unforeseen circumstances where a preacher gets in a position to where he cannot support himself by ministry alone. And uh, too often uh, a preacher finds themselves in a position to where they, they don't have any marketable skills outside of ministry. And so it makes them very difficult. It makes it very difficult for them to be able to support their families. And so they uh, resort to various means to, to try to make up the difference. And so where I want to start with with this is addressing young ministers, young preachers that are um, ambitious about going into the ministry, going into the ministry full time. Uh, I would say to, to you, uh, earn a degree, get some kind of uh, skill set that you can uh, make money, that you can earn money for your family. Even if you are a young single uh, preacher or evangelist, as I was at one time, and as a number of other young evangelists are right now, they are single. And yes, God's using you. Yes, God's blessing your your ministry, and you are preaching uh, all over the country for all of the churches in your fellowship. But that doesn't mean that that circumstance is going to last forever. What if God calls you to plant a church? And there are a number of different scenarios where where that support will no longer be there. 
What if you earned a, a master's degree in some field that you're passionate about? It doesn't have to be theology. Theology would obviously be great because you're a minister, but it could be in psychology or uh, philosophy or apologetics or any number of other uh, educational spheres. And with that graduate level degree, not just a master's, but go on and pursue a doctorate, a PhD uh, of some sort. Um, you can, as you are traveling, as you are traveling all over the country to preach during your times, during the day or, or late at night, whether you are a, a night owl or a early riser, you will have plenty of opportunities through your day uh, as a traveling evangelist to to be an adjunct professor online at multiple universities to add an added uh, stream of revenue to to your finances that will be a blessing to you and to the kingdom of God. It will also enable you to preach for churches who may not otherwise be able to afford you. Um, yeah, uh, church plants, small churches that wouldn't have you otherwise. You have an additional stream of income that uh, would be able to support you in those situations and in those circumstances to where you can minister in places that you, you may not be able to otherwise. What if you needed some downtime to assist a, an aging or ailing parent or uh, a personal medical emergency, some things that that come up that you you wouldn't uh, naturally foresee. You would have a means of, of falling back on uh, or an underlying means of support that uh, you wouldn't have if all you're depending on is the ministry. So I'm encouraging young preachers, earn degrees, do something that enables you to have uh, a marketable skill set beyond just preaching. And even if you stay full-time and booked the rest of your life, the added income and and the contribution to an intellectual field, uh, the contribution, uh, theological contribution, um, uh, making a contribution from uh, a Pentecostal perspective to apologetics, etc. Having a degree will enable you to not only have streams of income, but also to make contributions to fields where uh, a perspective that you have may be uh, so very important could actually even change and shift the whole uh, way that a particular uh, a particular topic is viewed, and God could use you greatly in that way. And um, and the 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 uh, possibilities are endless whenever you have uh, multiple streams of income as well as those streams of income. Uh, including you becoming productive, uh, productive in a way, uh, and, and in areas that you would not just from preaching the gospel. Uh, I also, I also have seen a situation where, um, where pastors, all they ever have known is preaching. All they've ever known is preaching. They've never had another, uh, uh, another form of occupation. They've never worked in the secular workforce. And um, I've seen a situation where those pastors, when they become aged and should be turning their churches and releasing their churches to younger men to carry on their ministries, they are unable to do so because their only source of income is the support from the church. And they need to they need to hang on to the church uh, in order to support uh, support themselves financially. And so what that does is it puts them in a position to where they often hang on to a church much longer than what they should have. and they end up they end up killing the life of the church. They end up destroying the membership um, of the church. Because they pastor, I've seen it happen, you know, into their 70s and beyond. And and the church just dies because they were unable financially to release the church. When if they would have had uh, a marketable skill set, uh, the ability to earn money and revenue and investments from other areas than just the church, they could have released that church without fear of the future and enabled that ministry to go on 
you need more than your ministry. Preachers, especially young preachers, listen to me today. You need more than your preaching to be a part of your identity and who you are. If, if you can't see yourself outside of ministry, if you can't see yourself as having any productivity or influence or anything to contribute outside of ministry, something needs to change in how you're seeing life. I know there was a there was a time for me to where I couldn't have imagined being or doing anything outside of preaching, anything outside of the ministry. And and it, it puts a person in a very dangerous situation. I told our church, um, the church that I pastor now, Center of Restoration, I told them a few weeks ago, I don't need this. I don't need this work. I don't need this job. I don't need our, our I don't need to be a pastor. I don't I don't need to pastor this church because uh it's it's not a part of my my identity. It's it, or it's not at the core of who I how I see myself. Um I've been through multiple uh spaces in my life to where I wasn't preaching, at least not preaching full time. And the first couple of times it happened, it was devastating to my ego. But at this point in my life, I, I don't need it. I don't have to have it. I have I have self-worth and identity outside of the ministry. And part of that is because I'm investing in my education and I'm, I am uh, investing in my future and investing in the ability to produce um, uh, streams of income and revenue that that isn't dependent upon the the political whims of the fellowship. Now, the, the, it's the sad reality, and I've seen it happen not only to myself, but to multiple other preachers, multiple other ministries to where if you're, you're in a particular fellowship or organization um, and in particular uh, fellowships where you, you offend or get on the wrong side of someone that's powerful in that sphere of influence, and uh, it, could, it could be something silly, something petty. But you get on the wrong side of of someone powerful in that in that particular group or that organization or that fellowship, and they can literally take your livelihood away from you. You can be flying high, preaching everywhere one year and the next have no place to go, have no place to preach. Uh, it can happen over a personal offense that has nothing to do with your doctrine, that has nothing to do with your stands or positions that you take. It can just be a personal grievance between you and that that uh, influencer in that particular group, and they can take your livelihood away from you. They can stop you from preaching. And <clears throat> you need to have the ability, if something like that would to ever happen to you, and don't, don't think that it can't because it's happened too many times. You need the ability to have a backup plan to support your family. And it can happen whenever you make uh, changes and shifts in your preaching and your views uh, that you hold on particular biblical topics. The same thing can happen there as well, to where uh, one moment you're preaching, the next moment you you have no place to preach because you've made changes that a particular fellowship or an organization uh, doesn't approve of, and so they they no longer use you in their particular sphere of a ministry and it may only be temporary hey my little guy my little guy here is has uh come in here to be a part of my um uh, my little video as i was saying um you can get yourself in a position to where um for whatever reason you're no longer in demand like you were and you need to have the ability to have a a, a, a support system that you can provide for your family in a seamless way that doesn't put you put you in a bind. Whenever you depend upon the whims and uh, opinions and uh, approval of men for your for your income, then there are going to be so many opportunities uh, for for that to go away and for you to um, uh, be put in a position to where you can no longer support your family the way that you need to. And so I'm encouraging preachers. Get get means and ways of supporting your family that doesn't depend on the whims of a church, the whims of a church board, 
them deciding they don't like you anymore. So they're going to get rid of you or a, or a fellowship or whatever happens that, um, that causes you to, to not have the places to preach that you used to preach. You need to have a support system uh, that underline that underlies your finances, that gives you the ability uh, to continue to do what you need to do in life if all of that should go away. And, um, and there's a number of things that positive things about a pastor or a preacher having uh, a marketable, a marketable uh, uh, skill set that, that, that earns income. Other men will respect it. Your congregation will respect it. Um, uh, your peers and others will respect the fact that that you are not just depending solely upon um, other people in order uh, to support your family and to be productive. And I think God would be pleased uh, for you to have that ability to do that. And even as a traveling evangelist, if, if you have skill sets in carpentry or painting or various other kinds of uh, of skills. You can be a blessing to local churches as you go and preach for them and aid not just in preaching, but in other other areas that you can be a blessing to a, a local a local church. Now, I know there's some preachers that their ministries, I've been there before, that their ministries and their pastorates are at such a level to where they don't have to have external uh, sources of income, and they may not even need or, or have the time to invest in it because they are so... Uh, busy, but having that ability to do so, I think is so very important. Even Paul paused to, paused his ministry to make tents at particular times in his life. He had the ability that when the ministry uh, wasn't uh, wasn't giving the way that it should at, at a particular time in his life, he had the ability to sustain himself through through a marketable skill set. And so I just want to encourage preachers, pastors uh, to, to do that. I, th I think I didn't finish my story from earlier. I was telling our church a few weeks ago that I don't need to preach. I don't need to be a pastor to have self-worth and identity. And I also told them, don't let that make you nervous. I'm not planning to leave, but don't let that make you nervous. The fact that I don't need this, don't let that make you nervous or scare you. The thing that should scare you is the preacher who does find his entire identity in preaching, because if that's the only way he can see himself, the only way he feels like he has value or worth is preaching or pastoring, then he will go to any length to protect that and to uh, to to do whatever he has to do to protect that particular church or ministry. Uh, that should scare you a whole lot more than uh, a preacher or a pastor whose identity doesn't require that they do what they're doing. And um, that means that they're they're doing it from their heart. They're doing it out of love for what they're doing and for the people with whom they are doing it and the people that they are serving. So let me get back to the, the, the points uh, that I wanted to make and the, the target that I wanted to get at uh, primarily. That's young preachers, young men who are thinking about going into ministry, who are looking at ministry. You feel like you are called to ministry. God bless you. The church needs new uh, and upcoming uh, ministries and voices and young men and women to enter into the ministry. That's great. Come on. Uh, the world needs you. But let me encourage and caution you not to do so at the expense of being able to function um, in life outside of ministry should situations or circumstance ever demand that you do. So uh, acquire a skill set, get a degree, operate in the fields of education, contribute to a theology, ph philosophy, apologetics, et cetera, and, and um uh, uh, have have a means of supporting yourself that is beyond and outside of ministry. All right, thanks so much, guys. Uh, if there are other ways and means that you that you um, that you can think of that would be um, ways for a preacher to have extra sources of income or other positive reasons why you think uh, it would be good for a minister or a preacher to have 
uh, streams of income and marketable skill sets outside of ministry, please leave uh, comments in the comment section. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.